Uh, All right, so we're back with another interview, and uh, luckily we have Kevin in town this weekend. Uh, I got some controversy on why Kevin wasn't my first interview, but uh, Kevin is a dear friend. He's uh, one of the people that introduced me to the sport of Monty Ring and really training dogs all together. So um, he's pretty special to me, so I wanted to make sure I have everything a little more set up. So, like I said, this is Kevin Bain. Kevin, why don't you introduce yourself a little? Uh, I'm Kevin Bain from Trinidad and Tobago, and I love manuring. That's love manuring, that's yeah. right. <laughs> I can definitely uh, vouch for that. So where are you, where are you currently living now? I'm uh, living in North Carolina. Okay. Yeah, Southern Pines. And uh, you're running, I guess, a, a dog operation up there. You're I actually train police dogs. Yeah, yeah. It, on top of running um, seminars and decoy work mm. and, and being a trial and competitor yourself, man of many hats and yeah. <laughs> uh, a dear friend to a lot of us here and uh, uh, several clubs around around Texas and the, and the country for sure. So let's talk about what got you into dog sports. Like in the beginning, what, what started it all? Well, when I was a kid, you know, <laughs> the kids used to make fun of me. They tell me, they call me a dog tanian. I'm always for the dog, you know, always for the dog. While the kids playing soccer, I'm with the dog, you know. Yeah. And it, it, it took me all over the world now, dogs, you know. Nobody, I never saw it come until today or, you know, my achievements is great. So, so I know um, we spent a lot of time together and talked, but a lot of these little details I've missed. Um, what was, in Trinidad, where, where you come from, what was, what's the dog culture like there? Uh, everybody has a dog. It seems like you have to grow up with a dog. Yeah. If you didn't grow up with a dog, you're not a Trinidadian. Yeah. You know, you need dog for security, for your fun still. Men need security. Yeah, so definitely it's much different than here in America where yeah. we have a lot of fluffies and, and a lot of just pet dogs. Yeah. They're looked at a little differently down there. Yeah, so we, we pet dogs is our security dog, our house dog, you know, and protects our place, you know, make sure it's safe. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're into. So now in the ring sport and the police dog work, how did that setting prepare you how did that give you the skills to do what you do today? Well, from Trinidad, you know, I started off making mistakes just like everybody. But when I came here, I, I already had a lot of skills. You know, not too much of the, I say, positive training. But as I came here, I follow a lot of, you know, secrets. I learned by mistakes too, yeah. looking at people and realizing you know, a positive is the way to go. When the dog learns a lot more better you know yeah what we had an understanding so what led you to monitoring obviously it's IPO yeah. uh, there's several different options why monitoring yeah so when I came I was looking for IPO club because that's what I did home a little bit more IPO and there was no IPO in San Antonio already or close to my house actually and then I have to get used to a country being so big mm. <laughs> you know an hour two hours was like no way that's a lot to drive yeah so then I, I met Ann, you know, I heard about Ann, long time on Uring Club. So I went there, check it out. And I'm still there right now. <laughs> I'm yeah. in love with it, you know. So you mentioned Ann. Um, actually, the first introduction to Monero Ring was uh, with you, Ann, yeah. and Karen Shivers. And I remember the first time I was there, I was like, what in the <laughs> world am I here doing? Yep. And um, through meeting you and Karen and Ann and getting to know everybody, uh, I quickly learned that it's it's much more than just dogs and you training. There's a big bond between um, competitors, judges, and decoys. Yeah, we call it a monitoring village. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's um, a village. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. everybody plays their piece into bringing a dog up. Yeah, everybody takes a part in it. You know, we need each other to help. You know. Yeah. And on the decoy side, it's a little different. We do to the police work because the decoy actually teaches the dog a lot of stuff. You know. So it helps. You know. Okay, so you said you come from Trinidad to America. Um, about how old were you when you when you moved? Oh, that's what, twenty six. <laughs> a lot about, of math. Yeah, a lot of math. About thirty five, somewhere there. Okay, and and you said you you were looking for an IPO club, and you what what was the deciding factor for Mondio Ring? Um, was just more availability to yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, just more availability. Yeah. And, you know, I, I liked it. Too and that's much. exactly yeah. why I do it. It's just yeah. closer to home. It's easier. Um, what was your first Mondial Ring Dog in America? Oh, I had um, so I had some others I go through first. That, uh, they wouldn't me what I wanted. 
So I, I always think there's a place for a dog, you know. I mean, yeah. it's just not doesn't fit my my foot right now, my shoe, you know. So my first real one is a uh, Chuck. Call him Chuck. A little Malano. I got from Mexico. You know, he wasn't nothing much to look at, but to see him work, it was something to look at. Yeah. You know. And and learning mondeoring as a sport, um, I didn't have access to a lot of level three dogs and. The first time I met Chuck, you know, we heard a lot of stories. Chuck pushed the ground down, right? Yeah, that's, that's what you said. That's what Chuck does. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember meeting Chuck, and through my process of learning Marty Ring and becoming a decoy, yeah. and um, seeing what a dog like that is capable of and how in control they are, it's yeah. def- definitely impressive. So, through your your decoy experience in the United States, where are some of the places that you normally travel to? Oh, if I go to um, Colorado, Colorado Springs, Denver, you know, to Ann, I go to, where they go, huh? Karen's here. At, yeah, Karen's here. Texas K-9, Lone Star Mondeo Ring yep. in San Antonio, and then Colorado. Yeah, Colorado, thinking who else? There's another place I went. I can't remember that place right now. Uh, and I was looking a couple of days ago on USMRA's website at your trial experience. Yeah. How long have you been decoying in, in America? Well, so I, I have been a certified decoy since 2011. 2011. And yeah. if you go on the website and you look at Kevin Bain's profile, you scroll a long oh, really? time. <laughs> they, you've got I didn't know. tons of trials yes, I got logged like on there. 60 something trials. Yeah. You know, yeah, it, it's, it's nice. It's nice. You yeah. know, but I'm, I'm ready to step back and compete. Okay. You know, it's it's a different feeling, but you know. yeah, um, I can agree with that. Uh, being a competitor myself, um, it's a completely different feeling competing with a dog versus decoying a dog for yeah. sure. Um, both have great uh, uh, great feelings when it all comes together, and yeah. it, being a decoy, it feels nice knowing that you're you're partaking in a dog's experience, but knowing that you're stepping on a field with a dog that you've spent a ton of time yeah. with and it's all going to come together hopefully and you take that collar off yeah. and you step on the field <laughs> and you just don't know what's going to happen yeah. but it's great when it works out so I, I think for like most I, I most people was really like surprised when the see chuck came out and knowing that i do 95 percent of the work because i would already asked for helpers or people to give my dog by really you know I do all the bite work, I do all the obedience myself, and people that know that, it was like, it's kind of impossible to see a dog at that caliber can switch so easy, and knowing that I'm the one that did all the bite work. Yeah. Know? Especially in that time, you know, like, since that time, 2011, 2012, to see a dog at that caliber, one decoy, the owner, the handler, it's tough, you know, so people was kind of surprised to see that. But so, now it's taken a trend, I see people, a lot of decoy doing their own dogs now. Yeah. And, so, um, you say you train Chuck pretty much yourself, uh, did all the work, all the decoy, um, showing him all the pictures. So, explain your, your training style. If, if someone was yeah. to call you for a seminar, what would you, what would you do? Yeah. I mean, so, I believe everything is learning, and we learn by mistakes. So, let's say I send my kid to learn karate. I don't expect the instructor to punch him in his face first. I expect the instructor to teach him skills first. A, B, C. When you get A, B, C, then you can move on to something else. Other people, I think, moves a little too fast. People people try to get to the whole movie, and I try to take the pictures. You know? yeah. So that, that's why I move different. Or now I think people get the trend again. Like the pictures are important. The pieces are important. You know, That's my steps, really. You know, I don't go too fast. You know? Um, I know mentoring under you for the last almost three years now. Um, I, I know in the beginning we, we butted heads a few times. I was yeah, like, yeah. do I got to carry this touchpad everywhere? Yeah, that, touch was, pad, that, man. that was kind of a theme. Yeah. And I can, I can definitely say that you teach with a lot of pitchers and, uh, so, sometimes you, you just know. Yeah. You know what you're talking about, but as a as someone that's there for a seminar, it might take through either it's a language barrier because you have a little bit of an accent in the yeah. beginning, but once you get to know each other, you communicate very well to the person that's there with a the dog training, 
and you make that person feel comfortable. Um, you, you make sure each person gets the time that they need to make sure it understands. I've seen you take people to the side and talk for 20 minutes. It's just to make sure that yeah, they understand. Yeah. And that's definitely appreciated for someone that's either traveled or paying yeah. for that seminar. So one of the, the most things I think is important too, you know, I mean, I was a measurable guy in school. Like I wasn't the best student, but now we call ourselves dog trainers, but I think it's kind of wrong. I think we are teachers, right? And if we understand that everybody doesn't learn at the same speed or the same way or understand the same way, we will learn, we will learn how to fix problems better, you know, and take, we time with each dog and each handler differently, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's it to me is important. We are teachers. People must respect me more, not just dog. Are you training dog? No. We, we are more than that. Yeah. So you say that um, we're teachers more than we're trainers. What is the hardest part? If you're if you're working with a person that's new to dog training or, or fairly new, what's the hardest part of that engagement? It's to teach them the language. You know, we might say we talk in English, but it's to understand. We go to the doctor and he say, you got syphilis, like, <laughs> what are you talking about? You know, talk yeah. English, please, talk yeah. English. So in, in his term, there's a different language, really, you know. So in, in the way I hear that, the hardest part isn't working with a dog. It's teaching the handler yes that's it's by far the hardest yeah. part that i find it's the hardest part for me to understand yeah. as a handler on how to apply what you're saying to this dog especially when you leave after the seminar and i know i've got to go home for two months and apply <laughs> these things yes, and remember yes. what you're talking about yeah, yeah. It, it and then it's not only what you taught me but how to step yeah. a little bit more and a little bit more for the next time you come back we can progress yeah because I know in the beginning, um, you would you would teach me something, and you would leave, and I'd be like, oh, gosh, how am I supposed to do this? <laughs> but through almost three years now of, of yeah. working with you, um, it's, it seems like maybe I've got you inside my brain a little bit. And, and, I, and also, I feel comfortable enough at this point to just call you up and say, what the heck am I supposed to be yeah. doing? Something's not working right. I think you're doing a great job. You know, um, you're definitely one of my best students. You know that. I mean, <laughs> And it shows, you know, I, I watched you compete the other day with your dog and nobody know who you were. But when you walk off the field, everybody know who you were. Yeah. You know, they had like, where is he, who he trains with, where that dog came from. And that, that showed that those questions only came because your performance. Yeah. You know, and that, that and to it, me is respect. If it, it's a big honor to hear you say that. Yeah. And I'm glad that we're, we've become such good friends uh, because... Um, you it, it and not only uh, the training stuff, but the fact that you've taught me to become a decoy and you trust me enough to work your dogs, yeah. you work my dogs. It's kind of a a, a mutual yeah, well, thing. Talking the language now, so yeah, yeah, it's good, you know. So, yeah. so you've been decoying yeah. now for how many years? When did you say you started? Uh, Two thousand eleven. So seven, seven years. years yeah. Um, so as a mondering decoy, mondering. I've been. Yeah, you, all my life, yeah, catching forever. dogs since yeah. I was 12 years in Trinidad. So in, in the Mondial Ring career, um, what, two years ago you went to oh, yeah. Super two, Selection? Yeah, 2016, yeah, I did the Super Selection. So yeah. for people that's watching yeah. that might not know what Super Selection is, uh, explain that a little. Yeah, Super Selection is, uh, so a lot of the decoys from all over the world, uh, they send the best, or if you want to go, I guess, everybody got different rules, you know. And a few of us from America went to to Holland, to Belgium, and it was pretty nice. It had about 28 decoys from different countries, you know, that wants to be... So you have to be chosen after you get your the best, you will be chosen for the next World Cup to, do, to decoy the next World Cup. That's how it is, really. So... Um Super Selection coincides with the World Championship competition, also with the dogs, correct? Yes. So, um, you went in 2016. Who all Who all went? So, I know um, Carlos went, Carlos, and then um, Jimmy went, and Francois went also. Francois, yeah. okay. And so, the, well, what, four American decoys four went? four American decoys. And it, it's pretty much a mixture of decoys around the world that want to come and try to compete for the highest yeah. bragging rights. Right, right? yep. I mean that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, and where was it? Where was it? The Super Selection and the Championship that year held. It wasn't the year. 
No, where? Well, I was in Belgium. I can't remember the town. Right? Belgium. So, um, for someone that's, I've never even really experienced it or even um, looked into it too much. Explain the scene. What what is the World Championship like? What what's the atmosphere? Is is it is it much bigger overseas than oh, what it, it is? Yeah, it was bigger because uh, a lot of countries, Spain, all those little island countries around, can come Germany. Yeah, or, you know, there was a lot of different countries competing. So not just it was the decoy; it was competing to be the best with the best dog yeah. in the world, you know. And I think we came second, was it? I think we came second. One of our dogs came second. Yeah. Yeah, level three. So you're allowed to take dogs: um, one level one, one level two, and five level three dogs can go. Okay. You know, and I must say, America has stepped up the game. You know, um, before when we now started, but it be one dog is not quite ready yet. No, we actually are competing for a spot now, you know, and that yeah. says a lot. We have grown far. So, so that particular year, how many decoys showed up for the super selection? Wow, uh, twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. 28. Yeah. And what what is kind of the schedule of events? Is do you just show up and work dogs, or no? You 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 have to, every decoy must bring their own dog, or come with a dog, or get. I get with someone over there. Um, Freddie sent off. I got with him, and he had a very nice dog. You know, actually, when I stepped on the field to compete against this dog, uh, everybody came to watch. I mean, everybody came around to watch, and I don't think they came to watch me. I think they came to watch the dog. The dog is a very good dog. Very, okay. very good dog. So how is it? How is it structured? Do you, do you do a physical? Do you do a written test? A physical test? Mm-hmm. Is it just kind of like a? decoy certification here how's it set up yeah, it's a little bit like here um so there's a written test first we did a written test then a physical you have to run so much and and in so many time with all the suit and then you have to run with the suit and then you have to know the rules the rules is like, important else don't play the game yeah so is it over multiple days the, the two selection days. two days two days and yeah. do you work you, you work different extras you do part yeah. of it and then so the first day we did the physical and the written test and then we went outside and then we did um so we did a, a normally like a face attack uh, a flea they want to see how you perform you know with the dog that you bring actually so then you, you show what you can do the object guard <coughs> you do that what else do we do? so if every decoy brings their own dog mm-hmm. how are all decoys judged evenly yeah so on that first day you had to come up so you you perform how you you know the rules and on the second day it's like a pot now now your dog goes in this pot and anybody can pick gotcha. your dog and you pick somebody else's dog it's not given to you yeah you have to pick so that's the way that the, pl- right. the playing field's even a little bit there right so now you don't know you don't know this dog and let's see what you can do with this yeah. dog you know? so i can imagine at some point all the maybe the judges were together given a briefing and and all the 28 decoys are there together. Um, what was the feeling like at that point? So uh, keep in mind, I'm a decoy of, what, three months now? Yeah, yeah. I've done two trials. I'm doing another trial here in a couple of days. And I'm kind yeah. of in awe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well, for me, um, I had some, some younger guys make fun of me. You know, they look at my stomach yeah. and they laugh. I say, oh, that is for me to escape the dog. Yeah. And they laugh, you know. But when I perform... They were not laughing no more. Yeah. You know, they were saluting. They shake my hand. Everybody want to know who I train with. And I told them that was the wrong question. question is, who trains with me? Yeah. And that was the question. Um, yeah. I know. <laughs> uh, how old are you now, you said? Uh, I'll be 46. 46. Month. Kevin's a little grayer in the beard now <laughs> than when I met him. He's eating yeah. a, four, a few more bowls of curry. Uh, yeah. But... Uh, <laughs> Hmm. Do not doubt Kevin's ability to to work a dog. I can say that for yeah, sure. Um, when Kevin decides to turn it on, you, you might have might as well flipped on a hurricane because <laughs> yeah. it, it comes fast. It's coming. It's coming. So you say that you were probably one of the older ones there. Um, yeah. One of the older ones, and you, you definitely recognize there were some younger guys, but rightfully so. This is a sport that's yeah. very athletic. It's very uh, it can be high impact, stressful on the body. Yeah. Um, I mean, we all get bruises and beat up pretty well. Yeah. Um, what what was maybe your first exercise? Talk about something like that. Do you remember? My first exercise, uh, what's the stick attack? That day, I think mm-hmm. stick attack. 
And then at some point through the exercise, you had an incident. Can yeah. you speak on that? So actually, uh, about two days before I, I get into the competition, I fell. A dog hit me on a flea and I fell and my shoulder came out of place. I put it back in without any help, actually. And then on the second day when competing, so actually I was at uh, the top, I was in the, the first day when we competed, I was at the top three. You know, they gave you your points. You yeah. know, I was, I sure I was at the top three in performing. And on the second day, my shoulder came out of place. You know, I rotated my hand and my shoulder came back out. And I couldn't get it back in. I think there's actually a picture. And I don't know if it's the exact instance, yeah. but I, I, there's a dog on you. And you're kind of grimacing in pain yeah. on, on your shoulder. And <laughs> it looked pretty painful. So you, your shoulder came out of socket. And you had to know at that point, gosh, I'm old. My shoulder's out of socket. But I don't think that stopped you. If I know Kevin, I mean, the, <laughs> you, you know you're going to push. It couldn't stop me. Uh, the, judge, the judge gave me a little time to try to get it back in. I couldn't get it back in. But I couldn't quit either. So yeah. I performed with my shoulder out, you know. And I lose points because of that. I couldn't think right. There were pain coming and going. And, but I, I stuck it out, you know. Yeah. yeah. I came to fight and we're going to fight. So, <laughs> through all the adversity you faced there, how, how did you finish up there? I came out of uh, 15 out of... Uh, 15 out of 28? Out of 28, yeah. It's not terrible considering the circumstances. Yeah. and So, I think, uh, forget the pain, but I knowing I can do better at that time. And was to me like one of my only chance because I'm not getting younger. Yeah. You know. And that, that was my that, next... That, that, was, that was more painful than my yeah. shoulder coming out. And my next, that was my next question. Do you think there'll ever be another shot at Super Selection? Uh, I don't think I want to. You know, I feel the age coming now. Yeah. I don't want to get hurt at this yeah. time again, you know. So, so you come back from Super Selection, um, tail tucked between your legs, knowing that you're old. <laughs> yep. And then you come back, regular business. <laughs> now, what, what's what been going on after that? Yeah, I've still been doing some seminars, trying to get people out there, you know, and Trying to find the right dog, you know. I did pick up a dog the other day. He's pretty nice. You know, extra is his name. He's yeah, extra. Nice so you've been working with him, and what you've uh, been trialing for what about two months now, three months uh, or so? Maybe one month. I would try the match. The three trials back to back. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, extra is the dog's name. Where did where did he come from? How did okay, you? So I got him from Riley, actually from somebody in Todd Dunlop uh, group. It's a nice dog, um, very pig-headed and just not the right handler, you know, and they couldn't handle it. So I end up with this dog and I turn him around, you know. So sometimes I think some dogs are, are reactive and I like my dog proactive. Yeah. And I know he has a brain, he thinks, you know, I think they did a great job anyway, you must say that, you know, that made it easier for me to just change his brain and let him know, hey, we don't have to fight. And we can do it your way, but if you can't push me, we can do it your way. And he understands now. Yeah, so your first trial was actually at our club after our decoy certification. And I actually had the the privilege, my first trial yeah. was to work <laughs> to work my mentor's dog yeah, yeah. in a trial. Yeah. And uh, and how did that weekend go for you? Uh, it went good. Um, actually, yeah, I, I, was, good. I was, I was kind of concerned about you doing the stick attack with him, knowing how he is. <laughs> But you, you held it together, so, you know, I was like, oh, it's going to yeah. be something to see. Yeah. You know, and he, he stuck on you, like... <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll post, I'll flash yeah. up a picture of, of that. stuck on you like glue, you know? Yeah, yeah. so yeah. you come out on that weekend with like a 196 or so? No, 195. 195. 195. And then you tr you turned around, left that trial, went straight to Lone Star Monday Ring Club at Ann's and yeah. trialed again. Right And away. And how did that go? Yeah, so I made, under, under Josh, I made uh, 197. So people think I'm crazy, you know, like, yeah. man, back to back and trial, trial, trial wise. wise. Yeah. I can't say a lot of stuff, but it's like, I don't believe in it, but just to each his own, you yeah. know, you, you get what you get in the pot is where you put in the pot. Yeah. And yeah. I can, I can, I've heard this trial wise yeah. and I, I think I've been on the sore end of that. Yeah. Um, I had a, had a younger, not quite experienced dog, um, tried to trial two days in a row and he just wasn't quite ready for it and honestly i wasn't ready for it and yeah. i think he knew that so um against the vice of so a couple of people i did it yes but i can see in you the way you train your dogs and the way you run your seminars is 
you don't let the dogs necessarily know when it's training and when it's trial. Exactly. Uh, you you uh, don't have a routine with your dog. You might work the same exercises every day, but they're a different picture to the dog. The dog can't predict when it's trial, when it's not. Yeah. And um, so I train the way I, I'm gonna compete. Yeah. You know, and that's it. And, and my dog, no dog. I don't think a dog want to not please his handler. I think every dog wants to please his handler. But once we find out what the triggers are, we end up with a great dog, you know. Yeah. And I can say um, from a train, you know, a handler myself and a trainer that there's lazy days that I just like, I don't want to do this or it's raining or it's cold. But I, I haven't seen a lazy day from you yet. I'm sure way up there in the tall pines, yeah. there, there's one every now and again. Right. Or maybe a hurricane. Maybe a hurricane stops no, your train. I, I, I still come out next time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you went, you left from Lone Star Mondial Ring Club, mm-hmm. and you went to to Ohio. Ohio the yeah. next week, yeah, or maybe next, two. Was it the no, next week? Yeah, two the week? next week. Right. The right. next week. So yeah. three weeks in a row. Yeah. And what happened up there? So I didn't. I didn't tell anybody. But I was like, after my scores, I was like, okay, I'm going for my 200. I didn't want to jinx it, you know. Yeah. So I tell my wife when we leaving, I was like, I'm going for my 200, you know. And by God, we made it 200. Yeah. You know. So we saw a picture, and I'll, and I'll post that up. You're, you're yeah. standing proud and, and, and with the dog. What's what's going through your mind when you have a dog of this caliber? You're such an experienced trainer like yourself. You know you have the tools to put together. What What's in your mind at that moment? Well, I think in nationals now. Maybe nationals. Then if he does good there. Uh, I, some people play to come first. I play to have fun first. Yeah. Well, it's easy to have fun when you're making two hundreds. Yeah, well, I mean, but we both and my dog and I are we are team, so we're on the same page. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and and uh, I've been on the pointy end of extra in a trial, <laughs> and uh, he doesn't, he's coming. Yeah, he's coming. So yeah. and and he has the same intensity with uh, with heel with uh, retrieve. Yeah. He he carries, and you can see how much fun the dog's having and I think a lot of that's your personality and your training stuff. Yeah, so from from go back to Chuck again, when people didn't know me and they saw Chuck, they're like, he's a happy dog and I say, that's how I make my dog. Yeah. And I think people don't get it, but we, we make them. We make them into who we are. You know what I mean? The dog is part of the environment. Yeah, and I don't want to give too much away, but we, you talk a lot about have to sometimes. Yeah. There's some times where a crossroad comes with a dog and you say, we're gonna we're gonna learn this exercise, or we're gonna make it better. But then you're also right after that, you're thinking, how can I make this fun and enjoyable, and, and carry that happiness yeah. into the dog? So we all school our, school our children, you know, and we all get beat. I, I think I get a whipping from my mom and my dad most, and my brothers and them. I took it yeah. for everybody. But then there were the good times after that, you know. Yeah. And most people get angry when they do punish or they, they correct the dog. I, I don't want to get angry. I want to let them know is I'm going to be fair and you do what is right. Yeah. You know, because first we teach the behavior and then one day he will say he don't want to do it. And then there comes he have to. Yeah. And he's supposed to do it. He's supposed to say, ah, not today. And I'm like, no, you can do it today. Yeah. Yeah, because you, you want to find those times yeah. on the training field, not on the trial field. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you an example. One day I have a, I had a dog named Achilles, and I go to my wife, and I was like, my dog is doing the positions perfect. And she's like, what's the problem? I'm like, oh, the damn dog doing but perfect. Yeah, well, what's the problem? I need him to make a mistake while we're training so he can learn. Yeah. If he's not making a mistake and he <laughs> make it on the field, he wouldn't know how to correct himself. Yeah. You know? That makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And I see it. And and you you'll if you don't it's kinda of maybe hard to understand through uh through this short little video, but in your training you're you're always trying to let the dog fix itself. Right. When we need to we intervene with either positive or negative reinforcement. But uh I watch it all the time. A dog get out, get out of position, especially a dog that you own gets out of position, and then all of a sudden, poop pops in the brain. They're back into position, yeah. and and that carries on. So you said you're thinking about nationals next year, which will be I think it's just outside San Diego, California. Yeah, somewhere in California. Yeah, uh-huh. long drive, trip all the way across the country. Drive like ah. Uh. Yeah. So and I see you haul your dogs everywhere. So yeah, yeah. you condition the dogs to travel. You condition the dog as much to retrieve and and recall off a decoy. You do the same thing with travel. And travel. Yes. I mean, you, you 
it's the whole experience. And your your intent, I'm assuming this year, is to go to nationals. Yep. Two hundred is what we're. Two hundred. Fingers crossed. And then <laughs> and then what? What do you are you thinking about? I think yeah, the FMBB first. I think the FMBB comes first. Then then. Wait, what is that? That's uh. So they have a uh, IPO. They have um agility. Not with the my dog. Different yeah. sport. Yeah, IPO agility. French ring, I think, also, and Monduring. All these people come together in one spot. Yeah. And they try to pick the best ones, you know. Yeah, so. So your intent is to make the world team and, and hopefully travel. And, yeah, and but only, there's only one spot. So yeah, only one spot. Yeah, I think I made I think I made my, my points already to make the spot, but I have to still go to nationals. Yeah, compete at nationals. Yeah. So... Hopefully that'll definitely work out. And then I yeah. and I've seen you training. You're already working on level two exercises. Yeah. And level three, it never stops. It's no, it like. never stop. No. Yeah. Yeah. I must say, uh, my friend uh, Lisa Lucero. She she made a two hundred also. So. Got yeah. some competition. Yeah. So you know, hats off, girl. I'm coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? So you, I, I just calling her out. You <laughs> she, said earlier. It's a fair game, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said earlier in the video that. You may be thinking about stopping or slowing down on decoy work and seminars. Someone that might be interested in training with you. Maybe is there you have a timeline in your in your brain set out on when this is gonna happen or not? Not really, you know. Yeah, you're not that old yet. Huh? Nah, I really with the punches, but <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could tell you, I, I definitely um, dread the day that you stop coming to Texas and and uh, hanging out, and not only training but just eating dinner with you is is so much fun. Yeah. And, and all the, you're such a fun guy to yeah, hang out with. You're fun, man. You make me laugh all the time. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and, <laughs> you know, it'd be great one day to maybe all make the world team and, and go as a big group. Maybe one day that yeah. can happen. I'm not looking for you. Yeah. Well, um, it's been a good interview, Kevin. It, uh, it's a pleasure to have you in town. It's a it's an honor to have you as a friend. <laughs> um, it's it's great to train with you and all that. And I appreciate you coming in for the interview and, and, and doing this so everybody can kind of meet you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah it's fun. All right. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> <All> right, <yep. laughs>